so I was at home this whole time where people, when people were wondering where the heck is Aimee, uh, just in this study of spirituality and waking up and what is it like to wake up and what is it like to see things as they really are. I was listening to a lot of spiritual audio about truth and waking up and making peace with what is and this helped me so much in my journey this was this lasted for years in Bali I even ended up doing a, a five-day silent meditation retreat with him in England with my partner at the time I it was it was like food for my mind to listen to these beautiful talks so full of compassion and wisdom a, a totally different kind of learning than the Abraham Hicks stuff and then the entrepreneurial business material that I was really into those years prior and it was really good for me while I was so exhausted and staying home so much and declining so many invitations because I didn't know how to function anymore in social situations just as an aside I didn't know what to say to people when they said how have you been or how, how have you been doing or what have you been up to because wow, I really felt like it was a whole lot of nothing a whole lot of falling the frick apart and being a mess <laughs> I just, I, I just, wow, I didn't even know how to present myself. I was so in my head about it, you know. You could just tell how, I, how I'm speaking about it now. It was it really concerning me how other people saw me. I started to become this seeker. <laughs> this is the archetype of the seeker. I just want to wake up out of this suffering that's all around me. And, yeah, all the, the, all the while moving through new territory in the relationship of challenge, new levels of fighting, and new levels of anxiety about where my life was going. It was really intense and I had also started to see an osteopath because I was living in a, a villa where there was some mold, which is super common when you live in Bali but apparently this mold was probably falling down on me on me throughout the night because of where my my head was positioned by the wall i was experiencing severe wheezing at night and i had to go to the er a couple times in a few months to get on um, a ventilator and so i see, started seeing an osteopath for my lungs and lungs is where grief resides so I was working with another healer and working on another element of my healing, which was grief, locked up grief, and death, which is it's a pretty predominant theme in my life. So I was just working on a lot of healing stuff. And the tool that helped me the most through all of this was the cultivation of awareness through meditation. Either I meditated on my own or I used these guided meditation audios from Adya Shanti. Um, I would also do some open eye meditations, just kind of looking out into the, the jungle. When I lived in Bali, I was so lucky. I got to, yeah, just pick a, a tree in the distance or pick a branch, pick some leaves like I'm looking at right now and just kind of allow the point of focus to anchor there and just notice how everything else came in came in and went you know when I when I held on to that focus and that allowed uh, a greater state of awareness throughout the day when I'm not meditating it's meditation is like Jedi ninja training it's so incredible <gasps> you have more space to realize when you're going into a, a story or a belief that's not really serving you in the moment another thing that really helped her was her reminding me that I am a spiritual being having a human experience. I know that you've probably heard this before, but we're so much more than this flesh and bone. We are a vast, a vast kind of energy 
that is more eternal than we can imagine. And this human experience is something that is very temporal and, and that we kind of chose on a level because we were excited to be here and we knew it would be challenging. And you know, you can only imagine, I, I like to imagine this line of souls trying to get in right now to this planet, to uh, an embodied experience on this planet because it is so unique and special to have this kind of sensory ex and emotional experience. So when we think about how much more we are than this experience in this moment perhaps of pain and suffering it helps give the perspective we need to just take a deep breath in and out and find a sense of peace about whatever it is we're going through and in all of this spiritual study i was softening more and more around the idea of not trying to manifest anything in my life i clearly actually didn't know what was best for me or what was best for me next what was going to be good for me to do in a month or two months or six months from now i clearly had no idea and i clearly made some manifestational decisions that had gotten me into this kind of pickle so i was leaning more and more into the the what isness of my life and learning to trust what was happening in my life it's it was a, it's just a totally different thing than this whole manifestation mindset i was learning how to release control of my life and i had gotten so many control issues from my mother and inadequacy issues from my father I really had a lot of control issues and I think most humans do because it's scary to not be in control. But listening to all of this spiritual material was teaching me that if I wanted to be awake, I had to let go of the reins completely and allow this river to just take me or where it wanted to go. There's a, a big part in spiritual awakening about the ego having to be obliterated. <laughs> as awful as that sounds, but the ego doesn't want us to wake up. The ego is terrified of us waking up because from this place of being it doesn't have control over our every action anymore. So, so I had to lean into this obliteration of my ego, which was challenging and uh, yeah, certainly not easy. I remember in my journey moments of really wanting to hide from the entire world, hide from all of my friends, not want to see any of them again because I was so far away from this happy, shiny version of myself. Gosh, I had so much shame around where I was at that time, who, who I had become, of the person I had lost. I was this hula hooper, just so happy all the time. And you know, if you asked how I was doing, I'd say, amazing. And I was so far away from that. I think that if somebody asked me how was I doing, I would be like, awful, terrible. <laughs> and uh, of course that, that shocks some of them. But I really started to hide myself and not want to go out, especially in, in my exhaustion. I was going to see all sorts of healers. I was busy, so busy working on my healing. I think it's really important to find a mentor or a spiritual guide, uh, someone who's awake that you can talk to about what you're going through. So you get some reflection that you're not going crazy. I 
am so blessed to have had this teacher in my life who's still alive. I think she's 81 now. I, I don't know what I would have done without her, but if you don't have somebody near you that you can talk to on the phone, I would at least recommend finding a spiritual teacher online or on YouTube that you can really connect with, like Adya Shanti, Muji, Ram Das. You know, there's, there's so many incredible awakened human beings on the planet right now who want nothing more than to help other people wake up. So finding people like this that you can listen to, that you can measure your progress with, to have somebody that you can hold your thoughts up to, to discern if they are healthy, true thoughts or not. And it is also really important to take really good care of your health and your body. Your body is your spiritual temple. So the more we can nourish ourselves and do everything we can to make our body feel healthy and strong, the better our spiritual body is going to be. And the spiritual body is where a lot of this deep healing work is taking place. Of course, the body also tells us the direction we need to go. And so it's really important to make sure that we're eating really healthy, fresh, vibrant, colorful foods and that we're yeah, giving thanks for the food and the water that we get to put into our bodies. Also, I would say don't talk about your healing journey, about the really hard time that you're experiencing right now in your life with people who don't understand, you know, with people who haven't been there, with people who don't have access to compassion that you really, really need right now. Really try and yeah, protect yourself in a good way from conversations that are going to leave you in a worse off place than you were before. I think it's really important to find friends, make friends. There's tons of ways to meet like-minded people and people on a path of awakening online these days. It's really important to find these people that you can talk to and receive support from and healthy reflections from and encouragement and cheerleading from. Yeah, this was, this was really important for me and I had to really learn how to discern who, who would be there for me and who wouldn't. And this was a time in my life where a lot of my deep friendships were formed when I really realized who was there for me no matter what, you know, who was there for me when I wasn't so shiny and happy and I was just being raw and ugly and real. Who, who loved me regardless? And yeah, it was in, in, in a way in hindsight, it was a beautiful thing for me to discover.